Okay, hello people, this is a quick tutorial to show you how to add an extra hard drive to a virtual machine which is in VirtualBox. Um, it's the same sort of procedure to do it to a real Linux physical machine, but obviously if I'm doing a screencast, I can't do it to a physical machine and show you, so I'm doing it in the VirtualBox. Okay, so what we've got here is Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. I have my um, CentOS 7.0 to a virtual machine within it and I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to quickly go onto the command line to show you what the current setup is ah uh, hold on okay so a virtual machine inside windows so this is the linux machine that's within windows um so when I configure this I did it really quickly so I've got really I've got one big file system well I've got a boot partition and a a root file system which is not a very good setup but I was just doing it quickly to test VirtualBox so if I do a command called fdisk um, which doesn't work as a normal user so I have to be root so you do the su command which changes the user sets the user so if I do su and then log in as root, which means I have full access to the machine. Um, if I do fdisk minus l, it shows you the partitions of the disks. So from that, you can see it's roughly a 17 gigabyte hard drive. It's a bit more than that, but it just shows you rounded figures. And you can see that there is one small partition here and a much bigger partition, which is a logical volume here um and it actually shows you a bit more detail about the logical volume you'll see that one one of them is root um just by the name you can see that and it's about 14.8 gigs and there's another one called swap um which is about 1.7 gigs so if you want to see this information slightly differently you can use another command called parted minus l and parted minus l if i move this up a little bit like this it shows you the same information slightly differently. Uh, where did I type? Yeah. So you can see here it says this SDA, Deb SDA is the, the one, the main disk. And you can see here 17.1 gigs. And also the same sort of information. And you can see the information again in another way. If you do LS BLK, it shows you the same information. Let me clear the screen and do it again. LSBLK shows you um, once again it shows you in a tree format it shows you that this is the main disk this is partition 1 this is partition 2 this SR0 is the CD-ROM drive um, it shows you that SDA2 is is like it's almost split up into two things it's a logical volume and it's got a root of 13 gigs and a swap of 1.6 gigs so I'm gonna um, do another video on logical volumes but this is just a basic video on adding a really um, simple hard drive with no fancy logical volumes or anything so I'm going to add like a 5 gigabyte hard drive to this so what you'll see is it'll be the SDA is the first hard drive and what you'll see is SDB show up and um, when I've added the hard drive and then I'll have to configure it so you can mount it and work with it so let me go back to the virtual machine I should be able to do this with it still running um, if I right click on CentOS go to settings and wait a little bit it's doing something Okay, so within settings, there is storage. So I click on storage, and here you can see CentOS 7.x VDI. Now, this is the, the hard drive. You can see it's just about 15 gigs there. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another disk, but as you can see, it's not allowing me to do it because I'm still running. So I'm probably going to pause this video. I'm going to shut down this machine and pause the video. Okay, so now I've turned off the machine. I'm going to right click, go to settings, and I'm going to click on storage. 
and then I'm going to click on the controller SATA and I'm going to click add hard drive and in here I've got two options create new disk choose existing disk I want to create a new disk uh, I want to create a virtual box disk image say so next a dynamically allocated means it it uses the amount of space it needs to use it doesn't reserve the whole space in one go it just it dynamically grows as you add more data to it so I'm going to keep it dynamic and on this I'm going to call it CentOS 7x disk 2 I'm going to make it about 10 gigs should be about right and uh, click create so now that's created a second disk for this uh, virtual machine um, I'm going to click OK so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot up the boot up the virtual machine. So let me go to the screen. You should see it booting up. Okay, the machine's the machine's now booted. I'm going to log in. Okay, good. And switch user to root. Where I've obviously got much more access. Um, now, if I go DF minus H, um, and the H is like for human readable format, it shows things in gigabytes and kilobytes instead of just bytes. Okay, so what I'm going to do, if you see, uh, it's exactly the same as before, but if I do F disk, what you'll see now is dev SDB. That wasn't there before. This is the new disk that I've just added. And you can see it's 11.8 gigs. And I run the, the other command called parted minus L. It will show you the same thing. Um, here it shows you what's new. This is what's new. It says unrecognized this label and it says 11.8 gigs SDB. That wasn't there before. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, oh, let's do the LSBLK as well. That's another command. And here you can see, this is the disk with no partitions. See this disk here, it's the first disk has got one partition and two partitions. But this has no partitions because I've just added it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the old command of fdisk. You see slash dev slash sdb. So I'm going to do an fdisk on the whole disk. And if I do, if, if I do m for help, there's all sorts of commands you can use. I use P to print part, the current partition. If I do P, you can see that we're looking at SDB, which is the second disk, which is 11 gigs, and it has no partitions at the bottom. But what I'm gonna do is create a partition. So I'm going to say N for new partition. It's asking me, do I want a primary partition or extended partition? I'm gonna say P for primary and What's the partition number? One. So I'm going to use a default and then I'm going to use the whole disk. So I'm going to just say thank you very much. Put the whole disk on. Press enter, press enter the whole disk. And if I type P again, you see now there's SDB1. That's, that's a new partition I've created on the second disk. Now, before I can just come out of this, I have to, to write all this information back to the to the disk and I'll type W to write now it's syncing the disks and then if I clear and do a F disk now what you'll see is the slash dev slash SDB one which is the new partition I've just created but before you can mount this partition you have to uh, format it to some sort of um, you need some sort of file system and um, there are many file systems like ext3 ext4 um, logical volume um, xfs there's all sorts of different file systems but i'm going to use ext4 as a file system so i can use the command make fs.ext4 and then type the file device file 
all the device files are on the slash dev. So it's slash dev slash sdb1, which is the partition. It has to be the partition, not the disk. And I press enter. Now what it's doing is it's creating super blocks, as you can see. And these are the super blocks, which I can go into in another video in more detail. It basically stores the information about the rest of the partition um, within those super blocks. Okay, now I've made the file system. I have to mount the file system. Um, to do that, I can I can create a directory. I can create anywhere. I can say make directory backslash disk two on the root. As you can see, this is where if I go back. see this too and I'm going to mount the device file which is linked to the actual disk mount it on that new directory that I've just created and as you see it's just mounted it if I do a df minus h now you can see that the, the, the first partition on the second disk is mounted to the directory slash disk2. And I can go into that directory and do an ls minus l. As you can see, it's nothing there. But I can, if I create a file, touch testing, one, two, three. Now you can see that file is there and I've just created it and I can even go through the Explorer in the graphical interface and I can see that I have on the computer I can see I have this two there and I can click on it and I can write files there as well as you can see. Ah. Actually, I can't write any files there because I'm the wrong user. So, see, this is quite important. I need to change the permissions on that directory. If I right click, you can see I can't do anything because I haven't got permissions as that user. So, as a root, it's a good thing I've noticed that. I will go back. Um, and if I do a minus, if I do an ls minus ld disk. You can see the permissions, root has ownership. So no one else can write to that directory except for root. So I'm gonna change the owner to me first and press enter. So now if I do an ls minus ld on this two, you'll see that I own it. Now, if I go back here again and right click, I can create a new folder as that user. See, this is another thing about Linux. You have to understand about permissions and so forth. And I'll do another video on permissions. After you've edited this, there's one thing you need to remember, and that is to um, make it part of the configuration of the operating system, because at present, it's only while the system is running. If I rebooted the machine, it would not mount it permanently. So what I'm going to do is make it permanent. Um, there is a file called FS tab and it's under slash ETC. And as you can see in this file, actually, let me clear it. Um, in this file, you can see that we have either the disk UUID mapped to a mount point or uh, device file which is mapped to a mount point like here for example that's root so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this file with vi and what I'm going to do is this I'm going to say slash dev slash sdb1 which is the device file map to disk 2 which is um, the directory I created and the file system type is ext4 um, default 
and then I'm going to say one two for like when it basically mounts to test this I could either reboot the machine or I could um, unmount the file system as you can see it's not mounted anymore and then if I do mount minus a it will mount everything that's in the fs tab file I'll do df minus h and you should see it's remounted again so that is the way to make it permanent after a reboot um thank you for watching this tutorial if you like what you've seen and you've learned something new please click on the like button if you please click subscribe as well don't forget the subscribe button below um, if you think a friend might benefit from this please share with them um, I'm going to do many, 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 many more videos. Um, I'm in the industry. I'm in the IT industry. I've got a computer science degree. So um, I'm just sharing knowledge. And peace, peace, family, and love. Bye.